Hello everyone and welcome to We Are Tacoma. I'm your host, Akili Brown, and as always, I am here to tell you about some of the wonderful shows, um, lectures, performances, films that will be shown here at the Tacoma Park Community Center. And our first guest today, I'm going to start off, uh, they are filmmakers from Street Sense. On October 13th at 7.30 here in the Tacoma Park Community Center will be their film, which is one of three films that will be shown. They are filmmakers, I want to make sure I get it right, Robert Warren yes. and Reginald Black. Yes. Thank you guys for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Um, so on October 13th, your film Fairness Rising is going to be shown here at the Community Center. I wanted to start off today's uh, interview by asking you guys about how you got involved with Street Sense. So I actually am a native Washingtonian and I encountered a Street Sense vendor at Eastern Market. And that's how I found out I actually was, so I was a street canvasser for US Perg and I was, I didn't make the quota so I couldn't keep the job and then there is a street canvasser that his job isn't in jeopardy. So I asked for one and been doing stuff ever since. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I came to Street Sense uh, eight years ago, and I started with Street Sense. We used to have a, a group that used to meet there named Will Write for Food. And at the time, I was actually experiencing homelessness, and I had written some things. You know, I was writing some things about my life, and I wanted a place where I could go and kind of use that writing that I was doing and get some of that stuff out there. And I heard about Street Sense and the paper and that group and I joined the group and I became a street sense vendor and I've been there ever since for the last eight years now. Oh, eight years, okay. And you said, how long had you been a part of street sense? So this is my, actually, my ninth year. Oh, being involved all right. So you, you guys are veterans, like you're yeah. seasoned <laughs> veterans. You've been there yeah, for a while. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess you could yeah, say I mean, <laughs> I mean now, but when I first, when I first came there, street sense had been around for years. And yeah. Uh, right. There are mm. others before. And um, is Street Sense just generally open to the public? How how, how does Street Sense operate as far as uh, the members and those who well, it I guess I can say benefits? I guess if you be, become a, a vendor of Street Sense, you have to come. We do vendor training every Tuesdays and Thursdays, and uh, it's usually just word of mouth. You'll see guys out there in the city, and they might be you know, a little down on their luck and need a way to earn some money. I think it's a good way for, you know, folks not to have to go out and panhandle or beg for money. You can actually have something that you can, the paper that you can give someone that has some contents in it, and you can also earn money. Um, I know it's gotten me through a lot, a lot of months where I had some really hard times, you know, and it's able me to be able to earn some money and not have to go out and you know, bag or scrounge around for things that I need. So, uh, yeah, if you come on Tuesdays or Thursdays, you can, you know, if you have an interest in being involved with Street Sense, or you can volunteer for Street Sense also. Uh, we have a lot of students. I think uh, our film group actually got started through a project with American University uh, and some students there. So actually that brings us to talking about the film. So you're mm -hmm. a film this and you all are, what's the best way for me to say it? Co-directors, co-filmmakers, do you have a preference in <laughs> titles? So for Fairness Rising, we're co-directors okay. of Fairness Rising, but mm -hmm. we each can still you know, produce another project. Yeah. So uh, I and that's kind of how our co-op is supposed to go. I know that you know, for some films, we will have co-directors because it's our idea. But as an individual, you also have ideas. So, you know, we're both co-filmmakers, co-directors, co-workers, yeah. co-community. I don't know. For Fairness Rising, uh, Fairness Rising, the word fairness comes from the advocacy group that uh, we're both a part of. Uh, and, uh, and People for Fairness Coalition, which is an advocacy group that was been in for eight years also in the District of Columbia. We're actually in our ninth year of advocating around housing issues for uh, folks who are homeless. And uh, the the idea came of telling the story of People Fairness Coalition and the eight years of existence that we've been in existence and fighting for 
folks that have the housing they need and to show how folks actually live in District of Columbia, one of the richest cities in the world, and some of their plights. So that was the idea behind the film and to, to showcase, you know, some of the folks who've been working in the homeless community for years. And uh, we shot about 90, 99 hours of footage. And we only, out of that 99 hours of footage, we only like made a 20 minute documentary. So, you know, it, it was a great opportunity to, you know, to raise our voices and to show folks, you know, some folks plight in the community and how we might be able to better assist those people. So it was a really great opportunity. Okay, all right, very good. So just a reminder for everyone at home, the film um, is gonna be showing here on October 13th, Thursday, October 13th at 7.30 p.m. All right, so we're looking forward to seeing the film. Thank you for your time, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back with some of the other filmmakers. Like people get frightened when a disaster strikes. Bags. They might run away in panic. Maggie? Pets should wear an identification tag. Thanks! Ma'am, is this your dog? Yes. I need to see some proof of identification. The ID is in the house. Okay. And I've got this uh, picture on the camera. What well, we do need to go up and look at the ID in the house. Okay. Come on, Max. Owners should have papers and photos as proof of purchase. As a pet owner, are you ready? A message from the Tacoma Park Emergency Preparedness Committee. Welcome back guys, and like I said before the break, um, I had two filmmakers before with uh, speaking about their particular film, Fairness to Rising, but now I have the other two filmmakers who will be a part of the Street Sense Film Festival happening on, always gotta remind you, October 13th here at the Tacoma Park Community Center at 7.30. I want to welcome Sasha Williams and Morgan Jones. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for Thank having you us today. Thank you so much. Um, so like some of your your uh, colleagues, I want to get an idea of your experience with Street Sense. You know, when did you become a part of Street Sense and what has that been for you? What has it been like for you? Well, when I first started with Street Sense, I was looking for something that I could do. I was unemployed. And I saw an uh, advertisement on Channel 4 News, and I said, oh, this is pretty good. I'll maybe give it a try. And it was, uh, I had to come down and do an interview for um, the position at Street Sense. It's like a, a one-hour interview you have to take to become a member. So I, I got in, and uh, I've been a vendor ever since. Mm -hmm. And how long ago was that? Like four years ago. Four years ago? Yeah, four years ago. Yeah. Okay. And Sasha? Yeah, so me getting into Street Sense, first of all, when I was working at the bank between 2007 and 2010, I actually met a vendor around Town area. And um, that was one look. And then one of the people you actually interviewed before I asked, mm -hmm. we went to um, school together, Job Corps, Potomac Job Corps Center in Southwest DC. And I actually seen him coming from work. You know, I was working at the bank, coming from work. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? So mm -hmm. he kind of told me a little bit about it. but. Fast forward to 2014 and I had a little girl and it was like, well, let me try to volunteer somewhere, try to see what's really going on. And I met someone taking my daughter to my aunt's house. She stays in DuPont Circle and she would babysit my daughter for me. But I met a vendor there at DuPont Circle and she was just like, well, just go over there. And mm -hmm. she was telling me all the workshops and things like that and all the good things that were coming out of it. So I got involved Okay. and it's been a wonderful Journey. Yeah, it's been a nice ride. It really a good ride. ride. Yeah. yeah. So now, when it comes to um, the film, you both have made uh, particular films. What was the filmmaking process like 
for you guys in making the film? Well, I was the first filmmaker. I made the first one called The Late Show with David Letterman. I was going to school at UDC, and I was looking for an internship. When, when you're in college, you have to do an internship. Okay. So, so let's hold that. Yeah, hold I saw this. Up. Yeah, okay. The Late Show with David Letterman. I couldn't believe it. He was looking oh. for interns at the time. Wait, where did you see this? Where? At the main campus, at the community college. Oh, no, at the main campus, UDC on Van Ness okay. Street. All right. I saw this, I said, they blame me looking for interns. I, th I thought it was a joke at first, but it yeah. was real. And I said, okay, I applied for it the first time, didn't get it, but I applied for it the second time. They sent me a letter. Oh, wow. They blame me, okay. people sent me a letter. Okay. I said, what? I just, yeah. Yeah. But I didn't get the internship, but I did apply for it, and you know, yeah, the rest well, system. Yeah, they yeah. Got I made a, a movie about it. I made yeah. a movie about it. We went up to New York. We didn't get to meet David Letterman, but we got to go to New York and we tried to try to get to meet them, but we couldn't meet them, but you know, yeah. I did go. And that is the, so the, the story. story is it's the one we're going to see. It's about me trying to become an intern with ah, David Adam. Okay. That's what I tried to get the intern, but I didn't get it. Okay. And about how long did it take you to make the film oh overall? Oh my God, it was, took about six months. And when you make a movie, they just take a long time. It's not, yeah. they're not easy. When you see them on TV, they, they, they take six months to a year. My movie took six months to make. It took a little too long. Maybe if I had rushed a little more, right. did a little more, I probably got the internship, but it took a little too long to make. Right. So now let's let's jump over to you, Sasha. Fairness, I'm sorry, uh, raised to rise, my yeah. correction. So DC General is a part of my history. I was born in DC General Hospital, and I came back with a daughter because now, well, I don't, right now I don't know what the process is, but now, 2000, let me see, the end of 2014, I actually entered DC General Family Shelter. So, being on that campus is a lot of lots to reflect on, lots to experience. So I kind of did my own little personal diary with the iPhone six. So mm. it's pretty interesting. And even watching it now, I'm like, well, this would happen, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, and my daughter is in there with me, and I'm happy about that as well. And I'm just glad that a lot of people are taking interest in it. I actually did a screening and. Georgetown University and got some of the doctors to mm -hmm. look at it mm -hmm. because they also had a Hoya clinic in DC General. So I would talk about it, let people know, you know, this is what's going on. Yeah. But it's a whole nother, it's a lot of things you deal with with being homeless and the fact that my homeless journey was shelters and staying with family, friends, sleeping on the couch on the floor. You know, it's, it's just a lot, but you don't know what people go through. But yeah. th tell a little bit my story and um, no makeup, <laughs> but uh, it was it was good. I was Angie Winehurst. She's the vendor of Street Sense. She helped me to produce it, supported me and everything. And Brian Ballo did the editing and met with me to make sure I structured it well. So <laughs> it was okay. really good. Hey, can I say a little bit about Brian Bell? I love Brian. Yeah, I love Brian too. <laughs> <laughs> he was our leader. He helped to make the pictures. So Brian, yeah. if you out there, man. I love you, man. Okay. Love you. Thank you, man. Thanks, Brian. You help Brian. Brian, we love you, Brian. We love you, Brian. Yeah. Definitely. So it pretty much sounds like you guys got, um, you, you have a really good support system. Yes, we do. A really good support street system. Sense. That's definitely what you get in street yes, sense. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And um, when I started, it was newspaper, and then little did I know, we transitioned to a multimedia center, which was fantastic, so. Yeah. And the GoFundMe page, we got go, GoFundMe page, it's going well. We make yeah. it a little, yeah. you know. Okay. Really Come good. DC TV members. Right, very good. And you guys will be here on October 13th. Yes, we definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. excited thank about you, the day. That's what thank we you. Need to hear. Thank you. That's what we need to hear. Thank you. All right, guys. So thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Again, October 13th, 7.30 p.m. here at the Tacoma Park Community Center is the Street Sense Film Festival. You've met all of the directors and filmmakers, so we hope to see you guys there. Uh, we'll take a short break, and we'll be back. Got it.
Welcome back, everyone, and I am pleased to be joined uh, for this segment with uh, Megan Murphy of Capital City Cheesecake, Captain Tyrone Collington of the Tacoma Park Police Office, and the always wonderful <laughs> Mayor Kate Stewart. Thank you all for joining me today. Okay. Now, um, I'm just going to be honest with you all just mm -hmm. from the very beginning. I'm not going to try to pretend. I have never heard of the Unity and in Community Initiative. Mm -hmm. um, so can you really break this down for me and also, I guess, the folks at home as well? I don't know sure. where we should start first. Should we start with you, Megan? Would that sure. be a good place? So yeah. what is the Unity and in Community in the Community Initiative? Uh, the initiative started with really focusing on what Tacoma Park is doing to strengthen our relationships with the mayor, the city elected officials, with the police department. And so it started from a place of just a simple conversation between me and Mayor Kate. Um, at Capital City Cheesecake, I was addressing her more coming from a parent standpoint. I have two sons and so in our household there's a lot of conversation recently around the nationwide attention being called to the interaction between the police department and civilians. So we just were just talking and I was asking if there was any resources for parents or for the youth to start to address our concerns or how is Tacoma Park interaction with the police department. Can I as a local business um, support or strengthen our relationships? And that kind of trickled from us talking to then our paths crossed when we were talking about the youth and employing the youth in our community. And the three of us sat down one day and we feel like it's really important that we do strengthen the relationships. They already are strong, but can, are there opportunities where we can strengthen them further and how we interact with the community? We kind of, kind of took it from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Mayor Stewart, you came in, I guess, second. So the initial thought started with you, Megan, mm -hmm. and then you came in. So when she brought the idea to you, what, what was going through your mind? Well, when um, I first went into Capital City Cheesecake, as Megan said, I'm a frequent yes. <laughs> person there. Uh, I, I, you know, these were things that have been on the mind of my mind, other uh, members of our city council. I've had many conversations with uh, Captain Collington and other officers. Um, because what happens um, across the country, uh, events that take place that frustrate, anger, um, sadden, uh, people in other communities touch us here as well uh, in Tacoma Park uh, and it's always good to work on relationships and to strengthen them and so when Megan um, started talking to me about this idea I was thrilled that she was interested in doing more and it was really just having coffee the three of us uh, and I'm going to give Captain Collington the credit for coming up with the name <laughs> Unity in the Community uh, <laughs> And honestly, we just started talking and the ideas for how to move this uh, initiative forward just spilled out. Um, and it also became clear that this wasn't um, just gonna be one event, that we wanted to have multiple opportunities uh, for people to connect in different ways. Some of them may be social events so we can get to know each other better. Others may be um, creating more dialogues where we can talk about um, some of these frustrations, some of the things that sadden us, some of the things that we really need to be working on uh, and understanding each other better. Um, so I think there will be multiple ways that we'll be engaging, uh, and I'm looking forward to the kickoff. Mm -hmm. And Captain Collington, can you give me an idea of what your, I guess, um, frame of mind or your perspective was when the idea or the discussion Yes, began? sure. Um, in light of everything that's been going on around the country, um, you know, we all felt the need that, you know, we need to get out in front of the community, let them know that we do care, you know, and from the police perspective that, um, you know, not all police officers are bad. And in order for a police department, in order for a whole community to survive, we have to have trust among the police and the city council, mm -hmm. police and the business owners, police and the, the community. So <clears throat> this was one way that we could, we could bridge that gap. Um, and with this going, ongoing initiative, uh, we felt that it was you know, very important. And as Megan stated, uh, this is not going to be the first one. Mm -hmm. No, this is just the face of it, the um, September 25th um, event. But we will sit back and we would you know, meet and decide on other um, activities that we could do um, with the community as a whole. 
So we just wanted the community to know that, you know, we're there, we're, we stand with them as one. Um, in spite of everything that's going on around the country and Tacoma Park, we are more of a family. Mm -hmm. You know, no, it doesn't matter what area you live in um, or where you work or, you know, what you do for a living, we are one in the community. And this is what the uh, unity in the community is all about. So Sunday, September 25th, uh, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, I am reading right now food, music, games, moon bounce. Mm -hmm. Now, is the moon bounce appropriate for adults? <laughs> <laughs> because I am very fond of moon bounces, so if I could somehow fit into the moon bounce. Right. Uh, all right, we'll come back to moon bounce. We'll come back. Yeah, we'll, we'll come have back. somebody expert that we'll expedite right engage right. you on that. That's all I need. That's yeah. all I need. Face painting, McGruff the Crime Dog, um, and a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. A whole lot more. Um, yeah. Is there anywhere people can go to find out more? Yeah, so if you, or? at this point, Capital City Cheesecake's hosting the landing page. Um, since the initiative's brand new and we're still trying to uh, get together and figure all those details out, we wanted to create a central place that people could go um, and they can actually join the initiative with their email address and then we'll be sending out emails with updates, keeping them up to date what we're doing, the partnerships that we're forming. If they have ideas of partnerships they want to form or community service opportunities, we're encouraging them to email us and let us know. So if they go to Capital City Cheesecake, there's actually the Unity in the Community tab at the top. If they click it, it has the initiative there and at the bottom they can sign right up and that way they can be in constant contact with us as we continue to grow the initiative. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Sounds very good. Thank you all for your time. I really appreciate it. For you guys at home, again, a reminder, Sunday, September 25th, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Capital City Cheesecake. Okay. There will be a moon bounce. Whether or not adults <laughs> can fit in, that's beside the point. We want everyone to come out. So I hope to see you all there. Guys, thank you again. Thank, thank you so much. It. We'll be right back. Okay, I'm ready. Hi, I'm Jackie. I'm here to pick up Mrs. Johnson. Hey, Mrs. Wells. She's ready. Hey, Mrs. Wells. Thanks for coming. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you called the village of Tacoma Park. Okay, let's go. The volunteer ride program is one of the services offered to seniors who cannot drive themselves and who are members of the village of Tacoma Park. The request for driving can be for doctor's visits, for shopping trips, or for social events. Regional rides are provided as long as volunteer drivers are available. Welcome back everyone, and I'm pleased to be joined by Dr. Jennifer Topkin of George Washington University. And on October 6th, which is a Thursday, Thursday, October 6th, here at the Tacoma Park Community Center, she will be giving a lecture on Mohammed Ibn Dawood al-Ishfahani. Did I say it correctly? Yes. Yes. Al-Ishfahani. Uh, Ishfahani. Ishfahani, a poet, of male fr a poet of male friendship and love in 9th century Baghdad. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Topping. Thank you. So I'd first like to get an idea as to um, who was Ibn Dawood? Ibn Dawood lived in Baghdad in the late 9th and early 10th century. He died in 909 AD, which is 297 on the Islamic calendar. And he worked as a judge, but he's actually more famous for writing poetry and for making a collection of famous poems and anonymous poems of love poetry called Kitab al-Zahra, the Book of the Flower. Mm -hmm. And what made Ibn so, uh, what made him so interesting? What made him so interesting is that he did not earn a living by writing poetry. He wasn't a professional poet. So he made a living by being a judge. And therefore, he wrote poetry to entertain his friends and to express his own ideas. Poetry mm -hmm. um, was a very popular social event and hobby in the Arab world in the ninth century, as in many centuries. And 
he is interesting for his collection of poetry where he talks about all the different themes and motifs that people use in love poetry in Arabic. So there's a chapter about falling in love at first sight. There's a chapter of poems where the poet hears the dove singing and it reminds him of his beloved and there is a poem or there's a chapter where poets see lightning in the distance and it reminds them of their beloved and Ibn Daoud wrote at least a few lines of poetry about all of these subjects mm -hmm. and is that it, so is it fair to say that was what made him interesting to you or were there any other things that made him interesting to you that's one of the things that made him interesting to me um, I find it really interesting that his, the fact that he was a judge influences his writing style. He always has this sense of rights and obligations and justice that you can feel coming through in his poetry. And another thing that makes Ibn Dawood stand out is that there are a lot of poets who spend a lot of attention, put a lot of attention in their poetry to describing the physical features of the beloved and her eyes and things like that. Ibn Dawood doesn't do that. He never talks about how beautiful the beloved is. He is more concerned with what is fair to do in love and he writes about love almost as though it's a virtue. He talks about how if you're really in love, you will be loyal to your beloved no matter what. In one of my poems, he talks about how nothing can make the lover stop missing his beloved. Mm -hmm. Not social gatherings, not music, nothing. Yeah. He names all these things. That are, are these poems, have these poems been translated to English? I am the first person who has translated them. So I translated them as part of my PhD dissertation at Catholic University, and I am hoping to publish them. Okay, so what what can uh, the audience coming to the lecture look to to expect? Will it, will they get a chance to hear some of the poems? Will you? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Right. So, okay. in the lecture, I will speak a little bit about. Arabic poetry in general and the world in which Ibn Dawood wrote poetry and some of the things that influenced him. And then I will spend the rest of the time reading his poems in Arabic and my English translations of them. Okay. All right. Dr. Taubman, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. That's all our time for today, folks. Uh, thank you for joining us again. We went over a few, uh, a few events that will be happening at the Tacoma Park Community Center. As always, you can go to our website. You can also find us on Facebook or Twitter um, to get the dates, to get the times, to also get descriptions of all the different events. For We Are Tacoma, I'm Akili Brown, and I'll see you next time.